Yeah. You have the you you had on your computer the student parts for all of these classes. Yeah. Oh, and you reviewed the looked at the questions in there. You'll do fine. If those questions didn't phase you, then you'll do fine. Oh. <laughs> Didn't use it at all. Plus, if you were nervous about not having a pencil, I have a pencil. So oh, it's that would, and that's I important. I don't, that would add too much pressure, though, if I wore the hat. Okay. Who else? Who else were you supposed to? <laughs> Antoine's in yeah. sign of phones. Antoine's supposed to be here. Oh no, Antoine said she can't make it. Okay. Um, Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Marjorie. Marjorie, but then there's someone else. There were six people all together. There was the guy. Who's the, that guy? The, yeah. the man who sat here. Yeah. Yeah. You, I think he only came to one, or maybe two. Yeah. I think he came to two. He signed up for the whole thing. But. Well, I, I finally heard from one, of, one so person who's never shown up at all was uh, uh, Mahmoud. Yeah. Who signed up and for Mahmoud was one of them, too. He just finally got through to us. Yeah. Well, I had emailed him and said, What's going on? Yeah, I, went I don't know. Did you have a conversation with him? PowerPoints. Uh, uh, no. A few questions. I don't think you So we had Marjorie, Antoine, Mahmoud, Bo, Leo, and Scott. Yeah. That's the six. Okay. All right. Well, well we are where we are. Six. That's right. Well, and all of you folks have gone right. through my ABC class, so much of this is going to be a review of things that we've done. But let's see if we can expound upon some of these. because I. So I asked you to bring those... Uh, kits if you still had them yeah. not so much because we were going to use them but just to say oh, uh, oh I, I don't get them yeah, I got mine you got yours oh you got okay he, 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 he gets an extra, go. he gets an extra two points on the exam just for that. beautiful um mostly because I I, I don't I didn't think we'd use them then I got ambitious and put these things oh, wow. together in front of us so anyway uh, I like the way they've laid out this uh, program. Uh, I, I think it's kind of a practical way of handling it. So they've divided the knots up into the tasks that they're going to do. So they're going to be looking at knots that secure your boat at the slip. Yep, there's knots for that. If you have to rescue somebody and you want to know how to use the rope and what knot to tie, preparing your anchor road. And fam finally, for those of us who are sailors managing running rigging, Who's currently on a sailboat? Nobody. You guys are all power boaters, so we'll blow by that quick because most of the stuff isn't going to be needed. You won't need them, uh, although other than to answer a question, perhaps. Okay. Understanding the function of knots and splices. Uh, knots actually include three different terms, knots, bends, and hitches. Uh, they are going to ask you to, in this, to tie 10 different knots. I don't know if they expect you to know them and memorize them. Uh, I've always felt that for most of us, three or four knots will get us through 99% of our time on the water. Um, yes, if you're out buying rope, you should know what to be looking for on the properties of rope and, and uh, the performance and make sure you buy the right kind of things and we can talk about <coughs> care of your lines if you like. The term marlin spike, which is the art of tying knots, also refers to that piece of wood, uh, which is used to open the strands of rope or cable, and uh, so it has two meanings. Uh, but in seamanship, we're talking about knowing your knots, your bends, your hitches, your splices, and care of rope, and so forth. So rope is manufactured today, almost all man-made materials, and if you were ever to take a laid line, which is a three-strand like this, and start opening things and peel them back, what you discover is, is that the little tiny threads are spun in one direction, then they take them and they spin them, uh, turn them into cording like this, and that's, they twist that the opposite direction, and then finally when they take three of them and put them together into the rope itself, now again they twist them in the opposite direction. So everything is, is spun uh, against each other and that's what keeps the ropes together. As they uh, manufacture them. So, what we're going to be talking about going through all of this is that once it goes onto a boat, there's, it stops being a rope, it'll have a purpose. 
Uh, there's only three items which have the name rope on them. One of them is the little piece of rope that rings a bell. That's called a bell rope, and the other two I can never remember. But everything else has a very specific name. The standing part is the piece that goes off to attach to something else. The long part that goes somewhere else, to another part of the boat to attach to something else. Uh, the bitter end is the leftover from tying the knot. That doesn't do any purpose at all. And then all of this is going to carry the name of either a knot, a bend, or a hitch. So, a bite is quite simple. It just simply means that you've done the flat. Put a bite in a line to get a, something started. That's a bite. Loops are going to be important, especially when doing things like a... Good. Brain came to a crashing halt, derailed. God, where's the Andy loop here? Loop um, um, loops can be either overhand or underhanded, and, and uh, I got a bowl of God. Thank you, a bowl of Jesus. You wouldn't you think of the more a term I never used. It's very important to know when you're doing loops to pay attention as to whether are you doing an overhand loop or are you doing an underhand loop. Is it an over or an under? On a bowling, it pulls together one way, but not the other. So loops can be done either way, and in many knots, it's important that you know which way that loop is done. A turn. I have one of my fancy schmancy things there. Send it back. So a single turn is this, and the rope goes off in two different directions. And if you do a round turn, the ends go off in the same direction. So very small difference between the two. It's the difference between that and all that, whether it is a turn or a round turn. And they use these, this terminology, as they're describing how to do these. So it can be used, as they just said, you can secure a boat to the bottom, to a dock, rescuing somebody, or for running rigging on them. Sail them. Now the most simple and most used is going to be just a couple of half hitches. Now the minute you do that, I'm going to get that loop out of there so it doesn't confuse anybody. So that technically is a half hitch. It'll stop bending on me. There we go. So that's a half hitch. Simplest knot of all. It's what we all put in the end of our uh, hood. Uh, Put ties and so forth, or in the end of your shoelace, and then you could never get them out again once they got all tied up and tight and so forth. You put two of them together, and it will hold. If if I was trying to tie the boat to that piling, and all I did was a single, well, clearly it's going to work loose pretty quickly, and it's not going to hold. It's going to pull out without too much difficulty at all. Put a second one into it, and suddenly it will hold quite nicely for quite a long time and they become the safety knots on other uh, itches and bends and so forth to keep them from unraveling in any way. When you make them it's important to remember that if you come around here and I go over the top come up through the bottom to make the first one yes when I do the second one do it the same way second time go over the top up through the bottom make the match, do not, then take this one and come under and do this with it. It shouldn't look like that. Point it at the camera. It shouldn't, thank you. So, Instead of the in, camera to be a student. In this case, I, I went over the top and up from the bottom once and then a second time. Okay. Now I could have done it either way. It doesn't matter. I could have come under first, down through the top, under a second time, down through the top. They have both half hitches. They both work. Doesn't. In this case, it doesn't matter 
as long as both halves of that knot are done the same way. Then they hold, then they'll stay put. Then the dinghy gets, stays attached to the back of the boat, etc. The boat stays in the dark. They just show how to do this again, in both cases over the top and up from the bottom, over the top, and then came up through the bottom and through again. In both cases, they, they do the same thing. So that's two half edges, one of the most commonly used, I'm not going to go through that, one of the mo most commonly used knots that you can have on the boat. Plate hitches. I presume, but let's find out. Grab the nearest one, undo the green lines, get the get that chain out of your way, get the, that thing off of the cleat, just take the green line and do a cleat hitch for me. Let's see who, whether we need to review this or not. Scott's got it, okay. Sandy? Okay, well, all right. So the three rules about any knot is you want it to, A, be easy to tie, B, easy to untie, and C, you want it to stay and fold and do what it's supposed to do. So in this case, the only criticism I'd have is when you're doing a cleat hitch, we're presuming this end that's attached is attached to your boat. Yep. And this is on the dock. Yep. So you come around. full turn, not halfway and over. You come yep. all the way around. Yep. Then you do the loop over. Mm -hmm. And then you, and this is where we talk about that loop I just said, overhand or underhand. So are we doing a this? How are we doing a this? How are we doing this? So you just have to make sure that when you twist it, you twist it and you know it's finished right if those two lines are side by side underneath this one. That satisfies all three requirements that it is uh, easy to tie, easy to untie. Okay. You got it. You got it. Now this is the twisty part. Now again, now you have to twist under, and you have to figure out which way to make a twist under. Oh, we do this. We do. Uh, we it's do. okay. You're struggling. Okay, we. everybody does. That's all right. I'm going to show you again and see if yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, yeah. now I'm going to do it from this end, and I'm going to yep. simply twist with this hand. And see these two little fingers? Yep. Oh. It's, got it. Yep. The trouble is, it's okay. Do I twist that way or do I twist this way? If you no, twist you the it. wrong way, yeah, no, I see it. I then see it, it falls apart. Yep, I okay? see it. I see it. So, so you it, come it. around and you twist with your little fingers. You want this laying out this way. Now you've got a half form. Now, now form your twist. Now you're doing it right. You're doing it right. You're doing it right. You got it. Nope. Yep. Up and I over. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right, try it again. It's all right. Don't, don't feel bad. Okay. I'm gonna twist. And now oh, this end. This, no, you're doing fine. Except that this end has to end up going over here in this direction. So you, now you just have to figure out which way to twist that piece. You got it right there. Lift it. Lift it. Yeah. Slide it over. There we, there we go. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Now, take that off, make the rope go this way instead of going this way. Yeah. And do it again. You two stuff. Now that we've got you figured, almost got it figured out one way. That's all right. That's all right. Now do the same thing. No, do the, do the single wrap around first. Oh, oh. Didn't I? No, you didn't. You just you did. Oh, fall the way around. So, right. Okay. Now cross over the top, under the horn, bring it back to you. Now figure out how to get back to do the same thing. And again, there we go. You got it. Hey, that time you got it. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Other way, Scott. Yep. Yeah. No, nope. you were right. Round, round. Yeah. The trick is when you 
over. Right. And, and then that's what I'm flipping the other way. That's it. It's, it's a pain in the ass. Looking at the diamond. Ah, that, yeah. That's, that's the way. That's yeah. Correct. That's the way it looks. This is, this is a cool little device you made. Okay. I'll be more so that's the right reason I gave you those kits. So I you guess can I practice always go the cleats at home. <laughs> now, here's the other secret to this is that, so again, the idea of this is that the, thank you, is that the thing that's tied down is your boat and you're tying this up to the dock. The other thing to keep in mind, if you're on the dock, you're a dock boy at the moment, and a boat comes in alongside and somebody tosses you a line and the boat's going faster than they'd like, faster than you'd like, and it's going to bang into the coming up along this side and go in that direction. And the fear is, is that the person's going to keep going forward and hit the dock, the boat tied in front of them, run right into their outboard or what have you. And you'd like to stop that boat. How long is your boat? 30, 36. 30. What does it weigh? 13,000 pounds. 13,000 pounds. And if I was standing on the dock and you handed me a dock line and you just asked me to stop the boat, I'm probably going for a swim. Mm -hmm. Or I have to let the boat go so I don't tear up my hands and you're going to hit the guy in front of you if you're going too fast. But with the use of a cleat, hopefully well fastened to the dock, when the boat is going by me, if I can get, again, this goes to the bow of your boat, if I can get a single full turn around that cleat and put minimal pressure on it, I can bring that boat to a full stop with one hand because all of the strain ends up on the cleat. Then it's up to the cleat and the dock line not to break. Then it's up to the marina, they use good cleats, are they well bolted and so forth, but it's not depending upon you to stop. It should, in every case, bring that boat to a stop with no stress, no strain, but the key to it is get it 100% around the cleat and come back to you. So the boat's going that way, this now acts as a brake. And whether it's the same thing can be done uh, on the bow of your own boat, if a line is tied off somewhere secure and you're trying to stop your boat, but most often we encounter it standing on the docks. Full turn and you can bring a boat to a stop very nicely. Could you finish the cleat while the camera is on that cleat? Would you like me to? Oh, to, I mean, can I do it? I'm not sure. So. For the student at home. Yep. And that's the key, is those two lines parallel to each other. Uh, Joe, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is there such a thing as the cleat being too big for the line that you're using on it, or the conversely, the line being too small? Because I've seen, like, at our marina, certain docks have certain size cleats, and, like, some of them, I mean, big. the cleats are six inches high, and they're... So they're not uniform. Eight inches long, I mean, right. and we've got like a mix of half inch and five eighths and so, line. And that is by no means, this is by no means a large cleat and I've certainly seen bigger ones. Yeah. And yes, it can be a problem. However, um, a small line on a big cleat will still hold. Okay. That's fine. Okay. A very large line could overwhelm a small cleat. Now I will often find that when I go to pick up a rental mooring um, that uh, they've got just some great big loop on it that's made for a tugboat and I go to put it over uh, my cleats which are not small but I mean if we did the same thing right. if this instead is on the bow of my boat and I'm trying to get this thing over it yeah to hold tight boy okay so what do you do now if you encounter that if you're on a mooring and you're saying I'm afraid this thing's gonna fall right off my cleat it's just oversized and then you go out and you find yourself on your boat digging the lockers and find yourself a bit of small line that width that much of it tie it around and make a bite out of it yeah tie it right around the throat as we call it and tie it up tight for overnight uh, to keep this okay. from lifting off the cleat just oh, okay. wrap it right around the neck oh, okay tie it off a few half inches and so forth and keep that from 
bouncing off. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say attach it to that and then use the other end to attach to um, the cleat. Well, then you're getting too many knots involved. If you can get the fat end at least under the cleat. The okay. cleat. Okay. If you can't even do that, you might want to find yourself a new mooring okay. with a better loop on it. But the other way, a small line on a big small cleat line will, will still always, hold. Sure. Okay. I mean, even a line like that. Now, yeah. if it's got a loop, can I get the loop over the other end? This one, no, so that's not good. So that's too small a loop and too small a line if that's what I'm asking it to do. But if it's merely just a thin line and I'm trying to do a cleat, cleat hitch, hitch okay. it doesn't matter what size. Okay. Almost doesn't matter. I can't imagine the case of where it would. Okay. Now, there are times, however, where you may find yourself coming into a dock to tie up, and you're not coming into a floating dock, you're coming into a pier where it's made out of essentially telephone poles. And they're fixed, and you have to tie up alongside, um, and how do you get your boat to tie up to a bollard, as we call them? Um, you could do what we talked about is, okay, I'll just do a couple of half hitches. Okay, the trouble is, is that it can slide up and down, and it isn't very tight, and you might end up with about 30 feet of line going out this way, left over at the bitter end, uh, and uh, you're going to find that it doesn't hold very tight and doesn't keep you very snug, and it's hard to adjust. Uh, it could fall down, father, drop right into the water, perhaps. And of course, you often encounter these in marinas when you back into a marina and they just have posts out at the end, and that's what you're trying to attach to. So, the best thing to use is number two on our list, which is a clove hitch. Now, a clove hitch is basically, and I'm going to move forward here and find, we'll show, we just went through this, so I'm going to flip by the directions because we just did those. Now, so there's a clove hitch on the screen. It is, you're going to find an awful lot of knots are just variations of the half hitch. And this is a variation on two half hitches. Let's watch and see how it's made and then we're going to practice it. So you would come in and what they'd ask you to do here, you can follow along the screen and watch what I'm doing. So we take a turn around. We're going over the top. Again, the importance of over the top or under. Around again. And here's where we get to the business end of it. Where do you do with this? We come around and now what? Not there, but here. Not there, but here. What's not? Not coming up through this. Yeah. I'm coming up over this part. Got it. You've got it. You no, do I have don't it. Know that I do. Yes, you do. Okay. Yes, you do. That's it. I think you do too. Just pull it up tight. Squeeze the two parts together. Yeah, right. Now, and here's the really neat thing yeah. about this. So. This is going to your boat. If it's a nice tight line, if you've done it right, I didn't do it. I can. I think you did. Wait a minute. You did. Oh. Not. Okay. And you come around a second time. Yeah. And it's on your up through there. So it still doesn't look right. It's like a right. sideways half hitch. Is that right? Come around. Get up through there. So you don't go through the hole. You go through. You make your own. Why am I having trouble seeing this? I'm still having trouble. It, it could be the device that's not being used. It can't be me. It couldn't <laughs> possibly be me. Yeah, no, it's never. What the hell am I doing? Now you're doing it. I'm doing it. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah. And then I come around 
That's what I've been doing. There you go. So the first time it's over the top. Second time I go go I'm now under the knot, and then I come up through this hole right there. Right. Okay. So over the top, part one. Part two is come under. Part three is come up. Right. So do one, two, three. See if you can make that happen. Okay. Now here's why it's important. So you come in and you first get to the dock and you tie yourself up to a post like this, or you've done, you've backed into the uh, bulkhead and you've got the two pilings out there and you're trying to adjust your bow lines and get them just right. The nice thing about this is that, again, this is the bitter end. This is going off to your boat, and if you realize, I got too much, I got too much line, I'm too loose, and I'd like to tighten this thing up. Okay. That's it. It doesn't look right, but Bo's got it. All right. Yeah, try and I try and try and pull it up and down the pole. Well, it's not so much Tighten up and down up. the pole. Tighten it. No, see if it's yeah. tight so yeah. that it's not going to go loose. Okay. Well, you've only done a single here, so let's let's do it again. So you eat step 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 one around the top. Okay. Full turn. Yeah. Step two under under this rope. Everything, yeah. yeah? Yeah. We're coming up through here. Right, through the outside. The outside, the second. Come on, pull on from both ends. Okay. So, can you slide it up and down the pole? And then <coughs> turn, it, turn it around so he can see that. That's what it looks like when it's right. Similar to the right. cleatage. Right. Uh, See if you can't sit down. Uh, no, you should sit down. Up. No, you have No, please go. Okay, that's all right. So, you start with once, once all the way around, 100% all the way around. Okay, now you're going under everything, under everything. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And then take that loose end and you're going to come up through here. Through the outer Three. circle. Up. From the bottom. Up. I'll pull it tight. Okay. Now, here's the nice thing about it. Is no. that first of all, once you've snugged it, and most of these bollards are fairly rough hewn, which is good news and is an advantage. Yeah. Now wonder everything. Under everything, Leo. Under yeah, everything. Got it, got it, got it. Right. Nice. And now uh -huh. is now as you nope, don't go around again. Now as you come up, get that end, the bitter end in your right hand. Get the bitter end in your right hand. No, underneath, no, from underneath. No, That's no, it. No, you've gone too far. Bring this around. Get that. Yeah. Bitter end. No, no, you 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 were doing fine. You got to here and you're trying yeah. to bring it around again. Right. Once you've got it this far. Yeah. Okay. Then you Come around, you won't under, okay, but he's confused, okay, and we're coming up through here. Up through the outer one. Yeah. And that's what, so we came up, first turn around over yeah. the top, yeah. underneath, yeah. and then you, you then you come through. Then you through the outer ring. Right. That's how you do it. Yeah, that's there you go. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, the right. only way you get these is if you, this. There's a way to do it this way, and then you do it the opposite way. Just like that, and it's done. I'd have to figure, I'd have to figure so it out. I'll show them that in a minute. The trick, yeah. trick is you go under on I'm the second sure. turn. Yeah, we're sure. Like that's the, the, you got it right, Bo, that's correct. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Now grab that, the now grab ring. that end, the grab the, just grab the yeah. bitter yeah. end. Yeah. Up on the ring you just made. No, at the back, no, on, at the back, at, oh, away from you, away from you, come on. You, you, were you just, you're doing fine. Yeah. You're coming around too many times. Now you're gonna come, you, you went over the top, you're under, right. and you're going to come up through the top right. right. Did you, what did I do wrong? Did this, we did this. Why doesn't it look like it is right? Come through the top frame. That's it. Mm -hmm. We're coming up through there. No, that's no, not no, the top no, ring. No, no. The top ring. This one? 
How did you manage to get me all mixed up? It's not you, it's this block. The block is broken. All right, now you can see the... All right, now time gone. out. Let's do the thing around. One over the top. Yeah. Come around one. underneath. Right. I got a loop. Right. I'm not through that. Right. Good. Now I'm holding everything in the left hand. Okay. And you pull it. And then that's it. Right? Now I'm going to stand beside you. All right. So I'm gonna make it up, make it up loose. Make it up. Okay. Give yourself some slack. Okay. I'm over the top. top. Over the top. Over, over everything. Now go under everything. Go under. Right. Grab yeah. it. Now grab that bit around. Yeah. Feed it up through here. Through here. The outside. That's only. Yeah. That's I'll this one. You got it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You got it. It's all right. Okay. Over then under. Over the then under. under. Some of these notches way over the top. All right. Now, why do we like that? Because now it snugs up, even on a smooth surface like this. This isn't any telephone roughness. It holds pretty good. It doesn't really <coughs> want to go up and down. And if it was more like a telephone pole, I'd never get that to go up and down, which is good. When you're tied up in a marina on the poles, you don't want that thing dropping down into the water. You want them staying up when you're tied up. You called it a bollard? A bollard, B-O-L-L-A-R-D. Yeah, bollard. bollard. Okay. Now, the other thing is, okay, I've tied up and you've got the bow, one of the bow lines on and the trouble is you realize it's way too slack. And I'd like to take up some of the tension. And somebody on the other side of the boat is gonna do the same thing over there on that one. And we're gonna get them and snug them and loose them. Well, the nice thing is, is that all I have to do now is take this and I can push it through and loosen this up. And I can pick up slack and I can pull it around, and I can pull this in, and a little at a time. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see, I took about eight or 10 inches out of it. How you do the same over there, now let's see how is it. No, take it another six inches on that side. You, you let it out, all right. I can let it out and get it to get rid of some slack and tighten it up yeah. until Without having to take it off, without having to undo the whole thing, I can work the slack so one way. Tie, huh? Tie it in. I can get the, <laughs> now. Once you get your boat positioned between the bollards, and you're happy with the tension on both sides, and you've accounted for high tide and low tide, I think we're good. Now you want to make sure that no matter what happens during the night, with all the boat rakes or windy and so forth, and the boat bouncing, that this doesn't eventually want to. Come undone. That's where our two half hitches come in. Security, belts, and suspenders. So now we come and we do a half hitch and a half hitch. That ain't going nowhere. And now it will not. It'll stay right there. You just do a couple of half hitches. You went and put them right onto the post again. You're doing it on the... I'm doing it on the line heading to the boat. Yes, you can keep adding things to the oh, clove right hitch. Here. You can keep building the clove hitch if you want, but that is a little more laborious and may take a lot more line. Yeah. And just put a couple of... Now, this is the line heading from the post, from the bollard, <laughs> to your boat. Yeah. And it's yeah. all night long. Yeah. I use these yeah. Yeah. Right. So all night long, it could get this all night long. Not right there. So you just do it yeah. on the part. And so back. right on the working end, <coughs> yep. a half hitch. How do look at that Another half hitch. Okay. This is something you should practice a lot. You'll use this not all all the time, especially on the clove the clove hitch. Now, I've shown you the long hard way to do it. Once you do them a lot and you're used to feeding these things around, it gets to be a little bit of a pain in the neck if the dock line you have is 40 feet long. And the trouble is from the bow of your boat to the bollard is about 8 feet. And you get all this extra. Hmm. One second. And the next, alright. You will learn eventually to do what I'm going to show you now. I'm not even going to have you go through it. Just know it can be done. That if I can reach the top of the bollard, I can do a loop under. Remember we talked about loops uh, over and loops yeah, under? Yeah. Don't, 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 don't screw yourself up. 
Just know that it can be done. Get mm -hmm. used to doing it the hard way. Do one. Do two. Loops under. That's all I've done. This is a pair of loops under. Okay? Loop under. I did a loop under. I do another loop under. A loop under and a loop under. You may find, well, that's a lot simpler than what I just went through. A loop under and another one on top of it, not two loops under underneath. Mm -hmm. And that's only if you can reach the top. Yeah, presumably you can reach this the top. extra credit. It. <laughs> it's actually an easier way to do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you'd like to take your knots off now and give that a little trick a try, you're going to say, well, that's a hell of a lot easier. You just have to make sure that you do the, the under over the over. Two under. You old shortcut. <clears throat> under. Perfect. Under. Perfect, Leo. Lay it over. Pull now pull time. both lines opposite to each other. Well, that is a shortcut. How's that? No. Mm. no. Oh, okay. I thought you had it. No, he's no, no. We went the, no, <laughs> one, one of the loops went the wrong way. Stand up. <laughs> uh, it, right. it, 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 you were righty or a lefty? I'm a righty. Okay. You've got to hold with this. You're going to make the loops with this. Okay. That's all wrong. Yep. Right. All right. And you're working too hard. Wait a minute. Yes. And then. No, no, I can't do that. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Okay. Again, that goes under. Yeah. Now the trouble is, the next, we're gonna do it on thing again. Now the trouble is, do you do it here? Um, no, that doesn't no, work. You gotta do it over here. So, the other one on top of it. Right. Okay. So it's an under, and an under. The second one goes on top. Okay. Do a left hand or right hand, do an under and an under. Under. That's over. See you're 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 oh, you're, you're working with the loose ends too much and you're getting yourself fouled up. Just do this. Okay. Just do that. I did it. And hold it in the left hand. Do oh. that first. Just do a flip under. Hold it in your left hand. Got it. Grab that. Yeah. Do another lefty under. There you go. Put it on top of the other one. Get over there, Hugh. That's it. Okay. Both loops over. Yep. Pull. Pull. There it is. Okay. That's the one you'll actually love. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's the ability to, oh, that's quick. Really because <laughs> now when you've got that extra 30 feet of line, mm -hmm. you don't care you got 30 feet of line. You can do it at any point on the line. Any point on the line. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like tying up the cleat hitch, you don't start out here when you got 40 feet of line and start it out here and say, now what do I do with this? You estimate and say, okay, I think the knot's gonna go here on the line and so forth. And this allows you to do the same thing. And you can put one over and so forth. You, you could put it over and sort of let the boat use it like a cleat to adjust mm -hmm. the boat and slow the boat down and bring it to a stop and then finally put the other one on top. As I said when we did this back in ABC, it's like tying your shoes when you're three years old. You, you couldn't do it then, it drove you crazy, it frustrated you, you had to do it a million times. Yep. It takes practice, okay? Okay. They said spend five minutes on each knot, and I'm thinking, yeah, right. Four or five. Both not practice. <laughs> yes. Okay, now. Now the other thing they asked for was just to show this would be used seldom. This is a round turn with two half hitches. This is not nearly as tight. You might use it. Um, it's sort of uh, intuitive that if you might have a reason where you'd say, I don't want I don't want this knot uh, to hold for very to hold me all night. I'm just gonna do a quick attachment of my boat to the bollard. And so all I've done up here, that's just a round turn. 
mm-hmm. on the post. And then I followed up with two packages. Now the problem is, is that you know this this can tighten up and it won't go anywhere. But on the other hand, it can also slide through easily. So I don't know that in my life I have actually used that very very often. I'm not sure. It's not a very secure hitch for tying up your boat. You might use it. I suppose if I was tying down the sail onto my boom and just wanted to secure it uh, and so forth, I might use something like that. But you use it short term, like for, short term. F- for fenders if you're rafting up or something. There we go. That could be off your. That rail. could be your lifeline, and you yeah. tie the fender to it. You just want to adjust the height of the fender. There's an area, right? Thank you. Where you might use it. So. Just a round turn, one half hitch, second half hitch. Right, it allows you to adjust the height of the fenders. Anchor bends. They ask us to show you anchor bends, and that's why I've attached these. If for some reason, this would be an emergency use only. I hope all of you have an anchor ready to go that's properly done up on your Mm -hmm. boat. But if for some reason you find yourself having to attach a line to the chain, the other line got lost or out, screwed up in some way or another, and you have to do an anchor bend, it's nice to know. The trouble is I've never had to use an anchor bend in 40 years of boating. You? No. No. So they ask us to, to use it, and it's here, and you can follow along and try it again. It's one of those things that once you see it, you say, well, that's simple. Again, they're showing it with a couple of half hitches attached. So just watch on the screen for me. So through the, we'll, we'll go back over this. One complete, two, two complete turns around. Just watch the screen for a minute. Bring it over the top, stick it through that opening, and essentially the knot's done. That's a nice knot. And again, it works because on on gravity, it tightens up on itself. So if you do two, So that you end up with two complete turns over, two complete turns over the, and then take this, two complete turns, yep, and then wrap it over the two lines, pull it through, and you're essentially done. Watch again. I'm going to back this up. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Better than that other one. So, once, twice. It's not working. All right, well, watch for a second there. Oh, just for one second. So, two, they could go two complete turns Mm -hmm. over across itself. And then through the loop. And through that opening. And that's it. You're done. Huh. Over across itself, like here. Oh, I see. I see. And through the Move. two openings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I got the loops. Yeah. Over. Yeah. 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 yeah, I just went the opposite way. Yeah. Well, one is for star, the other one's on port. <laughs> that's how you know. Yeah, over and through itself, right? Yeah. Just like that. None of the three stories. Two snails goes on this wall. Yes, you did. So two complete okay. turns, and then over, and then and you pass it. This. As Joe said, probably never used. How do you know it's that size? Uh, <laughs> way it's going to be covered. Right here, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you want all of this coming on this end away from the chain. Did you find that yep. magnet? All right. Magnet fish. Along the magnet. two. Oh, she was yep. talking about it. Oh, I think she was she just talking about it. it. Yep. And, that's not, and then, if you have enough left over, as you do, yep. 
then again to secure it at two half, secure it two and a half inches. Again, in 40 years, I've never needed it. It would entail, gee, somehow or other, my anchor road came undone from the chain and the shackle. Certainly, it's temporary. I wouldn't feel good about spending the night with that on the bottom of the wall, even with the extra half inches, which is what they suggest here. That's finished product. Looks very complicated. Well, once you add the two half, uh, once you add the half inches to it, it does. It does. But it if we like back fancy, up, fancy if we back up to that picture, no, it doesn't. Now, also notice that I wired up again, just a reminder, on any permanent fitting on your anchor chain, that that pin should be wired up to prevent it ever from backing itself out. That would not be a pretty sight in the middle of the night, because you would end up someplace you didn't want to be. Under. The next one comes under. Oh. Right? Oh. Yeah. They're both under. Right there. And then just call the come around. You go on this outside. No, no, no. Well, well, tighten it up first. Yeah. yeah. You got it though. Right, I was just I was exaggerating mm -hmm. the show. Right. I was exaggerating the show. The hitch is what you're doing is you're mixing up the unders. See? It's under. You go like this, it's under again. See that? Yeah. On there. And then you come around and you go through the thing you made. And watch me screw it up. That's definitely not it. Now you're working too hard at it. <laughs> I was just trying How to long is this example? Yeah. Luckily, you don't have to do nuts. Oh, we talked about the example. You don't have to do nuts. Oh, we have to look at them. The good news is you're going to get a copy of this PowerPoint. Wait, follow, follow me along. I just go to that site. I have left hand right hand. Animated dots. First one under. So yeah. I'm going to hold it with my left hand. Last yep. week I, I put it on. The, the other I'm going to do another one on. in my right hand. Yeah. Yep. Put them both together. Yep. I'm going to pull them in two different directions now. Sliding back to the under. That's it. Okay. Okay. Moving along. Oh, that was the that was the short one. That was the shortcut, right? Yes, that was the shortcut. <laughs> Not used for rescue or repair. A bowling. All right. This is the rabbit one. Everybody can use the line attached to the cleat and tie me a bowling in the other end. This is one you absolutely should know how to use. Half hitches, cleat hitches, clove hitches, and this is the fourth and one of the most important is be able to tie a bowling. So the question is, do you know how? Blank looks. Okay, that's all right. Uh, I think I do. You all go right. around it. So if the rabbit goes around and then it comes through and goes through the hole and comes down. Is that I it? I think she did it. And Not quite. So she did something or is that a necktie? So he, remember when we first got started, I said the importance of knowing overhand loops from underhand loops. Okay. So I start with this green line that you have, and I plan on doing the loop about halfway up the line, all right? And the first thing I would do is I would take, I'm used to doing this, I'm used to doing a shortcut. I haven't done it the other way in so long. Okay, so we're going to do an underhand, an under loop. Do that again. Do that again. Goes underneath. Yeah, but yeah, got it underneath. Oh, I'm holding it with my right hand, and I am going to. Let's see, I'm not used to. I'm used to doing my shortcut. I am used to doing my shortcut. You know what? I'm going to get everybody a. a Lines for everybody. Knew it would be. This is why I brought. It's easier with a loose a piece bit. of line. Having it tied on to the, having it nailed on there is kind of fun. Yeah, take, a take a loose one. Take a loose one. Take a loose one. 
Okay. Now, here's the secret. Notice what the way it's laid out there with the yeah. working end coming down the bottom. So we're going to end up with a loop hanging down. So I want you to do the overhand loop, hold it in your left hand. Left hand. Between my forefinger and my thumb. Get the loop, loop hanging down, Leo. Have a long end. The other one. Backwards. Leo, start here. Grab it about six inches from the top. Yeah. Put an overhand loop. Hold there the, we go. Hold the two. Okay. Yeah. Now, money comes up out of the bottom of the out of the hole in the ground. Yeah. This is the tree. Runs around behind the tree. Runs around behind the tree. Runs around behind the tree. Ah. Now what's he gonna do? Comes around in front of the tree and goes back down into the hole. Oh. Is that it? Now I'm I never let no. go. Okay, if, you wanna, if you work with Bo, I'll work with Leo. Okay. okay. So left hand? Yeah. Right hand, do an overhand loop, small one. Like that. Is that the one hand? Yep. No, you're going to give it a twist. You're going to do this. Okay. Yep. So I thought I'd okay. Give it a little twist. Tree. Got it. You can make that loop a little smaller. Yep. Give it a, give it a center yep. 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 That's fine. Yep. No, no, small one. Yep. Okay. 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 Don't let go. Got it. Bunny round. Yep. Up through the hole. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Round. This is the tree. Around the back of the tree. Yeah. Nice. Back down into the hole. Down right here, right? Yeah. Stop for a second. Yeah. Now, with this hand, just let, let it go. You're going to grab yeah. that and that yeah. together. Grab yeah. it all together. Make it yeah. Grab everything nice yeah. and tight. Let go and grab yeah. this. And pull. Pull that way and this way. Pull. Pull tight. Okay. So, there you go. Make a loop. And the key to it is. The bunny goes. The overhand the loop, hole. not an underhand. Right. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. Which way is it? Goes around Which the tree. You want the overhand loop. Yeah. And goes Going back down. It. Holding it, not yeah. letting go. Bunny yeah. rabbit comes out of the hole. Yeah. Let's do that. The tree. Behind the tree. Yeah. Down into the hole. You ready or left? The right hand. And I should have had you grab three. I should have had you grab a one, yep. two, and three. Oh, flip yeah. it. Now, my left hand, I can finally yep. let go. Oh, Up till now, I've held it all the time. And pull. Goes up through the hole. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Now, you try it. Yep. Oh, look. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to stand up. Yep. So, six, go six inches, six inches, inches of tree, right? Small now, hold it in your left hand, right? Small. Make your overhand loop. That's what I was talking about. No, right. you go on. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That one is the loop one you Put it between your thumb and forefinger again. Grab yeah. the two of them together. Yeah. Oh, that's my loop. Pull a little okay. yeah. stuff yeah. out yeah. of yeah. yeah. some of that. Okay. Good. Yeah. So okay, now grab the bunny rabbit. Yeah. Watch this. Up, out of there. Okay. Behind Sit. there. Down there. Um, now you're going to grab all three lines together. Yeah. You're going to yeah. grab one, two, yeah. and three yeah. in the right hand. Yeah. And then yeah. finally you can let go. Grab the tree. Yeah. goes back down. There we go. How's that? As long as the overhand loop is the first thing that people get screwed up on. If you don't get the overhand loop, and it's for someone who is holding it in the left hand, right. doing the rest with their right hand. If you get somebody who's a lefty and wants to do it the other way, I know there's many uses for this knot. Um, what's the most common for the bowline? Like when you want to attach something? Or well, let's suppose you're using dock lines. Yeah. Now you can buy them all made up with a nice sliced. Loop, and we most of us yep. do that. But if for some reason you said, okay, I got extra line on the boat, and I need another through, loop on the other end to throw right. over a cleat, right or well, you encounter that cleat right that's too there. big or too Maybe small, and I need right. to put the correct size loop, well, now you've got a loop that doesn't tighten up; it stays put. <laughs> it won't shrink just like this. It won't get any smaller. 
Is Jim Anderson having trouble with his colon? I'm not. Oh, no. okay. I'm following him exactly. I can do this. This is the one knot I can do in my sleep. I know. And then you go to teach somebody yeah. how to do it. All right, let me let me work with Bo for a minute. I think I'm going to the wrong no. hole when I come through. Okay. So, I make the loop, right? Thus far, so good? Uh, you want to make a smaller loop, no? Okay. You don't need much more. I'll leave. Right. Okay, Jim and this is on top. And the bunny goes through, right? Underneath. Underneath, no. It comes up. Up through the hole. That's it. There's the bunny. It comes up through the hole. And around here. And around. And Back through here? Yeah. I'm going to suggest that so we don't end up here all night. Yeah, no, I I'm, get it. You I keep get it. that piece of line, Bo, that I just gave yep. you. And if you you do have this student guide on your computer, I do. They walk you through how to tie a bowline on that. And if you've got if you want an extra couple of minutes before we go home tonight, we can do that. Do they animate it on this? Hmm? Do they animate it on this? Yes. Okay. And I have the they'll animation. Get this, they'll get the PowerPoint as well. So here's, here's what they've done. Is so we've got yeah. okay. we've got the overhand yeah. loop and this is the bunny rabbit right here. That's okay. the tree. The overhand loop, this is gonna end up being our bowl and loop. Bunny comes up out of the hole in the ground. Runs around behind the tree. Comes around the tree to the front of the tree. And back down into the hole. Back down into the hole. Which hole? See what, see what he just did? The hole he came up. The on. original yeah. hole. Yeah. Turn out the pole. Okay. Bunny comes up out of the hole. Runs behind the tree. And back down to the same. Comes hole. around to the front of the tree. And into the hole again. That he just came out of. Okay. You got now, it? The other place where it's important is they talk about it as a lifesaver. If you had to throw a line to somebody and you wanted him to, him, her to get it over their head and under their arms, you don't want to give them a knot that slips and tightens as you pull them in. And <laughs> <laughs> so you tie a big loop, not, a, not something to go over a cleat, but a big loop in it that they can put over their heads and the knots out here, mm -hmm. and now you can pull them to the boat. Now, the interesting thing is, is that um, with this, you do not need any half hitches in addition. It will not loosen up. Mm -hmm. And as I told everybody the story I told you is I have a fiberglass dinghy. It's 10 foot long. I don't know what it weighs. It must weigh 100. 20 pounds. I put a tow line on it and go up to Maine for three weeks. Last time, a couple of years ago, it was five weeks, and I tow it for five weeks. And five weeks of tugging on that line all for five weeks, you'd think, oh, you'll never get that knot on done. Get back to my harbor, uh, want to take the tow line off it finally after five weeks, it's undone in a heartbeat. But up till then, it never loosens up. It works beautifully. Is that it? No. <laughs> okay, give give up on it for a minute. We'll we'll, we'll get you. We'll get you if you have some time at the I end did after, it your, after your exam. That's all right. We'll do it again. All right. Now, why would you use a sheet bend? Again, this is really used. I actually had to throw a guy a tow line. Now, on my little boat with a 13 horse diesel, it was kind of silly, but I had to get a big heavy tow line to a guy, and what he had on board his boat was. He threw this stuff to me. He had a 20,000 pound boat and he threw this stuff to me to act as a tow line. And I was like, are you out of your frickin' mind? I didn't say those words. Uh, but that, he thought he, I was gonna tow his boat using this. He was in trouble and needed me to get him out of trouble in a hurry. 
I used it as the messenger line. I used it as this. But I needed to tie a small line onto, onto my much bigger line. And the problem comes in, and you can try this right now, is that if you take this and you take this, and you go to tie these two together, even with a granny knot, you're going to discover that maybe they stay together and maybe they don't. This one has tied up together pretty well, but very often not, lines of two different sizes do not want to tie together, especially if they're kind of stiff. And so you end up with lines that want to come undone. And if you don't want them to come undone, the simplest way to do it is to do a sheet bend. And again, what you will notice here is a sheet bend is very simple to do. So yes, you put a bend in it, a bite, I'm sorry, a bite into the larger line. Through it, behind it. tuck it back under itself. As you can see, it, what do we just do? That red line? That's a half inch. That's all that is. Over a bite. And then when you pull the two ends, yes, this is, I, I want the guy, I'm going to toss the thin line back to the guy that I want to get my heavy line to, and he's going to pull it over to his boat, and it wraps right around itself. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, like that? You just hit like that? Looks so like just, you've done it. Yeah. If it looks like it. that, that's the whole knot. We just did it. Yeah. It's nothing. Right. So there it is. There it is tightened. And that's the point. It's very, very simple. And it's essentially just putting a half hitch. Yes, there's a key to it. Yes, you feed it through, around the back, under itself, and tighten it down. Now, it's a temporary thing. It's just to tie one very heavy line onto a much lighter line, you're certainly not going to use that as a toe line. You're not going to use the combination as a uh, something to, to, as an anchor line. You're not going to use it to tie your boat up to the dock. It's simply, how do I get these two lines together because I need to get them from one place to another. Could you go back one screen, please? Sure. I just want to do it again. So the heavy line is the tow line. You want the guy to pull the light line, the thin line, back to his boat. And now the tow line is between the two boats. It's the only time I ever needed to use it. Was one, that's the only time I ever had to pass a heavy line. The purpose for you is to get the big line to you. So, you so then I to somebody. Have, so then they can untie So then they can get the big line so then you have a little... Because you don't want to pull with the skinny line. You want the big it's line. not the tow line, correct. The right. heavy one was the tow line. Right? But you're just you giving it something to pull it with. Yeah. Just, I just need to get it to you. And what would happen, of course, is, is that if for some reason you needed to get a very heavy line to someone at a distance between docks. I'm on this dock. You're on that dock. I got this great big... For some reason, we have to get the line. I have to hang on to one end. And, and the line's just too freaking big and heavy to throw all the way across the open water. If you've got a length of lighter line, tie it up in a sheet bend. Heave the lighter line, because it's lighter weight, across the distance. Okay, now the other guy's got it. Starts pulling it in. It's attached to the heavier line, and now the heavy line gets across right. the water. There may be times when you need to do that. It's rare. I, think, I bet if you were on tugboats, you'd use it a lot. Yeah, if you see a ferry boat, a lot of times ferry boats will use this the same type of mechanism to get the really heavy line to, to get the guy to, in the dock. To get the dock lines. They've got hawsers that are like this. Well, they don't take those and heave them ashore. Mm -hmm. They have to get it to a guy who can put it over those great big steel cleats oh, out of this hall. Yeah. Uh, you know. And yes, they will use a line of this thickness to tie onto the hawser. Using this method, heave it ashore. So when you're working for the Island Authority. Now, 
rolling hitches are only useful, the only use I have ever heard of using a rolling hitch that I know of is when you're, somebody has screwed up the line on the drum of your jib sheet and it's jammed and you can't get it undone and the jib is pulling hard and you can't get the lines freed up and you have to get pressure off of that line. It's the only reason I've ever heard to use a rolling hitch is for sailors in an emergency. So it grabs onto a line. And it won't, won't, won't drag down the line. Yeah. I just know that that would be the purpose. The other odd purpose. You're out there in your powerboat and you come across the 10 foot piece of telephone pole floating in the middle of the channel. Mm -hmm. How the hell are we gonna get this out of here? Somebody's gonna cause $10,000 of damage to the next boat that comes along. You could use a rolling hitch on the very end, lean over the side, tie a rolling hitch on the end of the phone pole, cleat it off, and you could tow it into shore. It would drag along behind you nice and straight. I mean, we're talking weird situations. That's the only, again, if you were on a tugboat, I bet they're useful. I'm not gonna try to have you know how to make it. You'll never do it again. For those of us on a sailboat, the figure eight knot, only if you wanted to keep a line from going through an eye or a pulley, we sailors like it. You say, well, it needs, you don't want it to pull right through the pulley, so you wanna put a knot in the end. Well, the old half hitch, as we know, that might keep it from going through the pulley, but if it gets tight enough and tight enough, eventually you have to get up the pliers to try to get the stupid thing apart. So we'd also like to have a <coughs> knot that, you know, will it do the job and can you tie it tight? Yes, a half hitch will do, but you can't untie it, so it defies that. So a uh, figure eight knot is simply, instead of a half hitch where I come around, I'm going to come around again and then go through. So I've made, I've gone around twice. And there's that eight, that figure eight. And now it's a little bit bigger knot. Go around twice instead of once and then through. Okay. Yep. And the nice thing is, is that this can be, the knot can be, as, as we call it, broken and opened up easily. Just, it, sailors are the only ones who use that to keep a line from going through uh, a pulley. So Leo, notice that if you do it a half hitch first, Leo, just do a half hitch. Yeah. Go ahead, do it, make one, loose. Just don't, don't tie it up, just make it a half hitch. Just nice and so I want you to make a half. I want you to make a half inch. Okay, so that's once around, right? You came right. through the opening, all right? right? All right, now, now undo it. Yeah. And when you've got it there, instead of, start to do a half inch for me. Okay, now you're about to go up toward yeah. your nose, right? Right. Go around again and go a down away from your nose, head for your toes. Right through, <laughs> through the loop, head, not your nose, head for your toes. And, then, and pull it tight. There you go. There you go. It was just an extra mm -hmm. turn around. Looks yeah. like a figuring. Yeah. And as I said, now she's got too many turns on that thing. Maybe Although it may be the here. line kinking. It could be the line kinking. Yeah. That's a thing of beauty. Yeah. But do what I did with Leo. Yeah, that do it. Do, do show. The way the a half hitch would be just do a half hitch. Yeah. So that's once. Go ahead, make a half hitch. So that's once around and down, yeah. through the top. And what Jim's going to do is come around and go around and come up toward the <laughs> ceiling instead of going down toward the floor. Like that. An extra mm -hmm. turn. It's weird looking. Okay. That, that isn't. That isn't. Like, right. Don't go on. And instead of, no, you're not going to make a half. You're not going to do a half and then a lot of them. I just wanted to demonstrate if you did a half, 
all right, we're heading for the floor. Right. Instead, what we're going to do oh, is come around the cast yeah. and, and head for the ceiling. Downs. Right. Is the number eight. Yeah. There you go. There we go. It's just instead of once around and through, it's twice around and through. Come around. Around again. Oh, daddy, huh? That's it. Talking about. Now, if you want a line that two lines of the same, now let's suppose you did want to tie two lines together of the same size and use them for some non-tension reason. It's not going to be your anchor line, it's not going to be your dock line, but you wanted to two lines tie, tie them together. I hope everybody in their lifetime has learned how to do a square knot. Can everybody do a square knot? Oh my god. Trying to yeah, tie two yeah. lines together, left over right, right over left. So do it with uh, do it with your thin line, yeah. just your thin line. Take the two ends, left over right, right. Pull it through. Now do right over left. That looks like it. there you go. Right. That's it. How do you tie your shoelaces? I use Velcro. <laughs> and you got it. That's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Like two loops. Yeah. And then they fell on each other. But. All right. I got to do that one again. I'm no, you. No, I'm sorry. You got both. You got two left over. Left over. Right. Left. Yeah. Over right. Left over right. You know how you do your touch? You, you, you go through. You got shoelaces. Don't give me that baloney. Right <laughs> over left. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's how you start your shoes, right? right. Yeah. All right. Now this one, right over left. You okay with this? Yeah. All right. We'll be sitting on the dock having not dining practice yeah. this summer. Yeah. I made great. all these it's really nice know. kits for yeah. these guys last year to take home yeah. and sit in front of the TV. Did any of them do it? Apparently I, not. Yeah, that was a year ago. <laughs> Apparently not. And I've only used one knot since then, which is the cleat hitch. <laughs> Mine was... Was that last year? No. Not for you. These guys. It was so 2019 left, so left over right. when Marjorie Punder. and I took yep. it. Right over left. Punder. Come on, Chico. I'm not joking around this time. Now... We, sailors would use it to tie up um, sails and so forth. The other way. That's it's right. not a very, it is not a very secure knot for tying up anchors, dock lines, and so forth. That's not the reason you use it. And it has to be done with two knots of the same size. So again, mostly a sailor's knot. Somebody with too much time on their hands came up with all these different There's thousands of knots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she bent. Okay. okay. I would encourage all of you when you get home to practice these things. Again, don't lose your kit. Sit in front of the TV. When the ad comes on, do a knot. Every ad, do a knot. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So you can do them in your sleep. Again, a review of rope characteristics. Um, when you're buying rope, know what you're buying and why you're buying it. What material is it made out of? How is it constructed? And is it strong enough? Is it the right size for what you want to do? Historically, rope was made from natural fibers. Hemp. Hemp or cohere or something like that. And they find money, sure. Everything before World War II, that's what all lines were made out of, was that stuff. And yes, they rotted in the sun, they rotted in uh, water, and uh, they had to be replaced on a regular basis. Today, man-made fibers make life a lot easier. The first thing that came out was uh, Dacron, which is polyester. Dacron is a brand name. And later on, soon after, came uh, nylon. And now we've got just tons of things. Uh, so that thing that I just threw on the table there is manila. It's rough on your hands. Uh, it kinks very quickly. It's prone to abrasion. Uh, boy, if you're a sailor and the line starts to get away with a sail and you go to grab it and stop the rope, boy, you can lose all the skin in your hands in an instant trying to grab that stuff. It's like sandpaper. Nylon is a wonderful product. We all should be using it on our boats. Uh, it's good for anchoring and mooring. Why? 
very, very strong, and the most elastic of the uh, lines. Uh, it stretches and comes back into shape. Nylon can stretch up to 20% of its length. A 10-foot line could stretch to 12 feet and come back to its original size and strength. Um, so we like it as our dock lines, because when you're sitting there at the dock and somebody throws up a bit of a wake and the boat jolts, well, that line stretches just a little bit and takes a little bit of the pressure off the cleats on your boat and therefore off your kidneys when you're bouncing around. Also, when you're anchoring, for the same reason, that it has lots of nice stretch and uh, takes a lot of the jolts out of anchoring and waves. Polypropylene. Anybody do tubing, water skiing with the kids, anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that what you use for the tubes? Why do you use it for the tubes? Why do you use this instead of my one? Because it floats. Because it floats. So it floats. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you familiar with it at all? No, but it's the stuff that doesn't hold a knot. It doesn't yeah. hold a knot. It's very <laughs> it's stiff. Yeah. It's impossible to tie a knot in. Yeah. It's, it's no, stiff I, and it's slippery. Yeah. So I no, it doesn't to like to make knots. Not a half pitch on that. But, yeah, good luck, or a bowler. But the key to it is it floats, and if you're tubing and water skiing and you come to a stop, you don't want the line sinking under the water and wrapping around your prop. You want it right up on the surface. So that's why it's used, and typically it will all be spliced in loops and so forth, and it'll all be pre-spliced and so forth so that you can do away with the need for knots because the knots just won't hold. You leave it out in the sunshine, it will eventually deteriorate over the course of a summer. So no, it's not for dock lines or anchoring or anything like that. It doesn't wear very well. It's subject to abrasion, chafing, sunlight. But that, the whole point of it is, yes, it floats. That's <coughs> why we use it. Now I have a, I have a piece of a tow line, and the interior of this on the inside is polypropylene, like mm -hmm. that yellow cord. Oh, yeah, here it's white. The outside is uh, is polyester uh, for, for abrasion resistance and re resist the sun. This floats. So when I tie and tow in my dinghy um, and I come to a stop, the line floats on the surface of the water. It's got the abrasion resistance, it's got the sun resistance, but it floats. So it's a combination of two different products. <coughs> polyester there's the brand name Dacron we like it on our sailboats because it doesn't stretch when we're putting up our sails and we want to get them up tight and hard and, or pull the sails in and, 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 uh, and heavy breezes and so forth we don't want the line to stretch once we get the sails set the way we want it we don't want the wind to pick up and the line to stretch and all of a sudden the sails lose their shape so we like polyester for our running rigging, as they call it, the parts that move and we pull and adjust, uh, we use for our dock lines, however, we use nylon. Second part of that, and well, I think they're gonna cover it. Well, it, it, at risk of going over it twice, is that I have no idea what this is made out of, but I've often seen nylon braided this is nylon as a laid line, okay? We would prefer to have our anchor lines and our dock lines as laid line nylon as opposed to braided nylon because two lines of the same size, both made out of nylon, this will have more stretch, more shock absorbency than this will. Hmm. Under no circumstances do you want your dock lines or your anchor lines to be polyester or daquan. It will not be a comfortable knife. It will be strong, but it won't be very comfortable and it'll put a lot of wear and tear on your cleats. So dock lines and ankle lines, a laid line is preferred. So here they're showing a variety of lines, different sizes uh, that are all braided. We love them as our, uh, for our running rigging, for to pulling in sails, because under our hands, it's much smoother, much nicer on our hands. So we like it to be braided for that reason. Uh, and made out of polyester so it doesn't stretch. 
Then on top of that, there is just a ton of new high-tech stuff coming along. They are now doing on uh, many boats today, uh, sailboats, uh, some of them are high-tech boats. Instead of having um, uh, stainless steel wire stays to keep the mast up, they're going, in, in some cases, using stuff like this. And for the lifelines as well. It's stronger than the steel. Is Dyneema? The way Dyneema, it? that's one of them. Yeah, there's a ton of them out there today. Again, they're slippery as hell. They are hard to work with. They have to be spliced carefully and so forth. But, and almost always they consist of an awful lot of these. Even this. And this one that I had here. Almost all of these have a core on the inside of something and a cover on the outside. Mm -hmm. These are almost all cores and covers. Um, and, oh, here's one. This one's interesting as I pass it around. I don't know what that stuff is in the middle, but typically the very strongest part of whatever fiber they, whatever product they put in the middle that they wrap the cover around, the middle is the strongest part. That's what provides the towing strength or uh, whatever they want. I have no idea what that product is you're looking at. I don't know where I got it's that. Bounty button. sheets. Okay. Yeah, 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 bounty sheets, right. Have you ever learned how to splice that stuff? I've right, seen people right do line. it, I've never done it, but it's amazingly simple. Oh, it is simple? Yeah. No, this stuff, I, I'm not sure this stuff really is that strong. I think this is the stuff I've had problems with tying things. Well. But the point is, that typically, the strong stuff goes in the middle, yeah. uh, and then the protective covering goes over the outside. So that's the way it's supposed to work. Uh, low stretch doesn't rot. It's not affected by environmental exposure and costs three times the price. Do not, as I've reminded you, buy your line at Ocean State Job Lot. Everybody remember my story? What's that made out of? Plastic. Oh. Plastic. Oh, it's an anchor line from Ocean State Job Lot. Goody, goody, goody. No, don't do that to yourself. Might work for a canoe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So. We just talked about that. <clears throat> Laid line's good for anchoring. It does tend to kink, but it has more stretch. Yes. It's hard on my hands, which is why we wouldn't use that sort of thing on our, one of the reasons we wouldn't use it to uh, pull in, use it on our jibs and our main mainsails to adjust them. Uh, it tends to be a little less expensive per foot than the braided lines. But that's, price is not typically the reason why you would want to be doing, making your decision. Braided lines, we talked about on sailboats for that reason. This is called a diamond braid, I think over there a different core, we don't know what's under there. High strength, easy on the hands. It's a parallel core. This looks very similar to whatever it was that, although that, that looks like all yarns, that doesn't look like fabric. It's tough to tell in that picture. Here's the key to it. You go to buy a line, and yes, you can find out that certain diameter, I need half inch line. Look at the breaking strength. The old-fashioned manila would break at 2,600 pounds. The nylon breaks at 7,000. Polyester is almost identical. That's why we don't really see much difference in the strength. The polypropylene, not nearly as much. However, safe working strength of that is only one-fifth of the number you see here. So with, if you were to, literally trying to pick up a weight with a crane with these lines, you'd only want a thousand pound weight maximum on that line to pick up. You wouldn't try to pick up something 3,000 pounds. It may be tested for that. You don't want to find out that it lets go before that place. So for safety, 20%. 20%. For dock lines, if you're looking at, you know, West Marine's got the chart. It's like for this size boat, you should have this size line. If you were like right on the line between, say, half and five eighths, which way would you tend to lean? Because the bigger line is stronger, but it also, it's not gonna stretch as much for a given weight boat. 
I think it would depend upon whether you feel as though that line is going to get beat up or are you generally in calm waters? Are you in a windy spot? Are you in a place where, gee, I'm on a river with a lot of commercial traffic, the fishing boats, the lobster boats, the ferries are in and out, mm -hmm. going up a wake, we're bouncing around like crazy. Go, oh, that could be a long trip. I was amazed that this line was one of my dock lines on my 32 footer. And I had engine problems and the mechanic said, just bring it into the dock, tie it up there on the dock and I'll get to it this week. I came down a week later and found that I had a new dock line on my stern because over the course of the week, tied up to a cleat, the line had worn completely through. Um, and it was, I think, where it went through my chalk to my stern cleat. Is that nylon? Yeah. But a line of that size in a week wore right through, which leads to something we'll get to in a moment, which is shape protection. Because yeah, we have a mix. All our lines came with the boat, in it, and it's a mix of yeah, and half yeah. and five-eighths. Right. Now, I, I won't pass these around unless anybody forgets. Talking about the strength of lines, do you remember passing around these little strings two years ago when I had you pull on them? You're looking at me like, what the hell is he talking know. about? You guys remember from last year the little strings? That have a knot in them. Well, I don't know. Oh, it's going to lift the. Um, <laughs> you're going to do this. Okay, now pull until it breaks. Where did the knot break? Where did the line break? <laughs> the line broke <laughs> at the knot. He gave you the answer. Knot. Yeah, very close. Right at the knot. And why did it? Because any knot weakens the line. Any knot you put in it weakens it. Now an eye splice, the middle of the line, an eye splice down here in this bottom corner, that retains 90% of the original strength of the rope, almost as good. A short splice, we'll see a picture of it, is where you can splice two lines together. But notice on all of these others, no matter what kind it is, you lose a lot of the strength all the way down to that basic square knot it's less than half the strength. You lose more than half the strength of the line. Okay, so every knot weakens the line. That's another good reason why you buy a line and intended to take only 20% of its tested strength. Because already on some of these, you're gonna be losing 50% of the strength when you put a knot in almost every line we have on the boat, we put a knot in. So selecting the right rope, okay. Scott, you're in West Marine. What material? Well, that's going to depend upon the purpose. For most of you guys with power boats, you'll be buying nylon. How is it made? What are you going to use it for? So I would bet that 90% of the lines on power boats are going to be laid line, three strand laid line, nylon. Then it's just a matter of the diameter and the strength that you need, what it's being used for. Material for a ski tool, <coughs> we talked about the polypropylene and laid line versus the braided line. Laid line does also tend to be a little less expensive. It can kink and it's very hard on the hands. Not a big issue for you guys on the power boats. It is for us guys if we were hauling in sails. Braided line is what we use for that because it has a little better strength but less stretch. Costs a little bit more. Don't let cost be the reason why you do or do not buy a line however. So where do you find the breaking strength? Manufacturer spec specifications. About 20% of the uh, break. A test break load. Yeah. Break breaking? Yes. 20% of the breaking strength. There it is right there. I'll bet anything that shows up on your test if you're in a few minutes. I haven't seen the test, yeah. I've just been it as well. How long does the test take? Oh, four or five hours. Oh. Um, no, I shouldn't. I hope not. I don't think the test will take that long. All right. So protect the ends of your lines from unraveling. At the very least, you can take uh, your uh, butane lighter and melt the ends. That will do okay. But there are a number of things that you can do. We'll see it here in a minute to protect the ends. Uh, protect them against shaping. So I told you how that wore out. Now, because it was unprotected where it went through my chalk. Um, on a 
dock line or an anchor line, you may want to use something very heavy and sacrificial. This is made to be chafing gear. Uh, and I use something like this for a long time on my uh, anchor line, uh, my mooring line on my boat, because I'm always on a mooring. So the idea is, is that if anything's gonna wear, let it be this and not my very expensive mooring line. The thing that I use now, this is closer to what I'm using now, is a piece of very strong uh, fabric. I don't know whether this is polyester or some other product. Uh, again, I don't know where this came from. This wasn't from me, but I found it and somebody had the, a piece of chafing gear on it. Uh, this has, does not undo. Somebody had to slide this onto a line and then do the splice that we see here. Uh, but there are various types of fabrics that, again, those are designed to wear out first, but some of them today with, I've got one, I don't know whether it's made out of Dyneema or what it is, but the practical sailor has tested them and just said it's nearly bulletproof. So there's a variety of products. If you're tied up to a dock all the time, they should be on every one of your dock lines where they go through the chalk so that they don't wear out. Or if you're on an, now you don't necessarily need it on an anchor line when you're anchored overnight. Do you have chafing gear on your, you're tied up to a dock, I presume in the yeah, summer. We don't have any chocks. You don't have chocks, just goes right from the dock to the. It goes right from cleat to cleat. Clean and on does the it, dock, clean it, on the boat. It, and is it a clean stretch? It doesn't touch your fiberglass? No. You're lucky, okay. No. All right. So, uh, so protect against chafing, overloading, kinks, shock bends, Watch out for the chemicals. Um, don't uh, decide that, uh, gee, the, it looks a little dirty. I'll soak it in a bucket of water and bleach. Don't do that to lots. Let them be a little dirty. Uh, you can clean them. Um, I have a, uh, a net bag that uh, I've got at home. I guess it was supposed to be a laundry bag to take on vacation, but it's tall and it's yellow and it's a big net. I will throw my dock lines into it if they really do start to look scrungy and I just throw them in the washer uh, so that the bag keeps them in one place and uh, just run them through a, a laundry cycle and with just a very little bit of soap in the thing. I, you could also just soak them in the bucket of water and rinse them out and hose them down just so you get the salt out of them. One of the things that will kill anchor lines and dock lines quick is if the salt dries inside the line. The salt crystals over time will eat that line out from the inside out due to abrasion. Salt crystals will do a little sawing effect as the line stretches, as the line stretches, salt crystals. All of a sudden the line goes and you say, how did that happen? It could have been from salt. So hose them down once in a while if they've gotten a lot of salt and soak them at the end of the year. Let them dry. Now, the nicest way of doing things is to whip the end of a line. This is the cheesy way of doing it where I simply heated the end with a butane lighter and melted all the strands together. That's okay, but if it's, this is gonna get a lot of use, that's soon gonna come apart. So you can use a number of things. Uh, in this case, I think what they're showing here is tape. You can melt the ends, which I just spoke of. You can buy liquids in a little can or a jar where you dip the, the line into the line into it and let it dry and you end up with something like that that keeps everything from unraveling. Uh, there are little sleeves that you can buy and slide them over the end and then with that butane lighter gently heat them and they shrink down and hold everything together. Or the nicest thing you can do if you have the right stuff and I used to show people how to do it but it's, a, it's time consuming we'd be spending an hour showing you but Yes, you can do whipping on oh. the ends of lines like that. There's a number of ways. That's a little more complicated than some. That involves some sewing. But if you want to have a lot of time on your hands and you want to do a nice job, you can do things of that type. I am now, eight, well, I've been done it for years. I can do a simple whipping like that wow, in about cool. 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes on any line and I can get it whipped. Cool. Okay. That's an art. Uh, actually, it's amazingly simple once you've done it a couple of times. Now that one, as I say, used a needle, a sailmaker's needle, and sewed through and so forth for a little fancier, but uh, 
what they're showing up here is rather simple to do. But yes, to have you guys do it would be an hour. So we won't get into that now. We talked about the chafing gear. Even using some old water hose can will do the job. Oops. Stowing lines. Um, I always used to take my dock lines and so forth, and when I coiled them, I used to give them a little twist so that as they coiled up, that they hung nice and straight. Especially on new lines, I'd make sure that these are old, so these will coil up nice and neat and so forth without any problem. But on new ones, what you will find is that when you go to coil them, that they will have a natural tendency to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, I don't want them doing that. I want them, well, it turns out I've been doing it wrong. Especially on new lines, I should have been allowing them to hang in this sort of figure eight fashion. And the reason is, is that if you were ever to take that line all looking like a figure eight and hang on to one end and heave it to somebody, it will uncoil perfectly for you. It's unnatural for it to try to be forced into these nice neat loops. It may look nice, but you're forcing the line to twist in a manner it doesn't want to. And when you go to toss it to somebody or undo it or let the ankle line go over the side, it wants to spin back into its original form. It all comes from making the line. We talked about all the little threads, they twist these this way, then they take the threads and twist them the other way to make the small ones, and as they make the bigger ones, they twist it back and forth and back and forth, and the line's trying to take a particular shape. And by trying to make it neat, I've been doing it wrong, and it fouls up the line. So um, if it, your line wants to fall into a figure eight, let it. Let it. Now, so they're showing here, and you notice this is actually falling into a figure eight combination. Now, this guy's standing on the deck of a boat, and he's a sailor, and he's gonna hang it on a cleat, but you can use a similar uh, process here to uh, tie up your lines, and that is you just put them over your hand, uh, one after the other, nice and neat. Uh, in this case, you can see that this is probably a halyard that's come down the mast, it's already cleated. This is the 80 feet of it that uh, is, is left over. And he simply reaches through and pulls a loop and puts the loop over the cleat. And there it hangs. But you can do some similar things where after you've done, I'm gonna do a miniature version. So you've done all these loops bigger you can wrap a couple of times around and you can then if you've got two feet left push a loop through not all the way do that with your dock lines and now you've got a dock line that stays put I can toss it to you and it will come undone yep. and so forth and yet it will come, yet it'll be ready for you when you need it. On the docks, if your excess dock lines left over on the docks, the bitter end looks like that. Take a minute. Don't have people dripping over it. Coil it up. Keep it flat. Keeps it out of the way. Looks nice. And again, nice simple hitch doing the job by the way I didn't mention it the other major advantage of the full cleat hitch like this is if for some reason under any circumstances that line is under incredible tension whether it is a storm has come through and somebody decides I want to get off the dock and get off this dock before this thunderstorm comes through and it's already blowing like snot or for some reason, you've got to undo a cleat hitch. The nice thing about them is that so this end can be pulling like crazy. You can safely undo the cleat 
And as long as you've, again, got that full turn that I talked about when we started, how you put the brakes on the boat, as long as you keep that full turn on it, you can do it perfectly safely. You're going to be blowing 50 miles an hour on your 30,000 pound boat, pulling like crazy on this. You can always, you will still get that knot untied just as easily as I just did, because the strain is not there. The strain is coming from underneath. And then when you are ready, and you say, okay, we're going to let you go. Now you can undo it, but you're prepared to do it, and it isn't getting torn out of your hands, you hope, right away. But no matter how much strain that's on, you can always undo a cleat hitch. So that's one of the beauties of a simple knot like that. Any more complicated, any more turns, any more times over, just makes life harder. Okay, so... Yes, you can even finish off a line if you're in jail, 20 year hitch. You can learn how to do that and make all your lines look like that. You have to have a lot of time on your hands to pull that off. High splices, I've learned how to do that finally. It, it's, it'll drive you a bit crazy the it's first five to six learn. times. Yeah. And what, once you've learned it, it's a lot of fun to do. Well, it's the getting there that drives you crazy. And there are even such things as short splices. if somebody wanted to tie two very long lengths of line together into a very very strong single unit this would keep about 80 percent of the strength of the line commercial vessels may do that yeah, you won't see that on recreational boats like a glue lamb you a glue you know what i'm talking about anyone know what i'm talking about no mm -hmm. you put a couple of boards together to make a to make a longer board. Yeah, and to make like a four by four or something yeah, out of just uh, creates more surface area. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. Surface yes. Area. Yes. 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 Now this is just for us guys. I this may or may not come up in the test. I I gotta find out how I believe we're gonna do this on the test. You guys aren't sailors. The point that they're trying to make to us here is that I keep hitting the wrong button by fault. Okay, I'm looking for this. That piece of the line, that line is the same as this line. That goes off to the sail over here somewhere, okay? All they're telling us is that the line has to come in at an angle that is ever so slightly angling up. And we wrap from the bottom on the way up. We put it over this tongue, which feeds it into, this is actually a cleat. This is a spring-loaded cleat, mm -hmm. and it's called a jam cleat. And that's what holds it. But the, to keep it from jamming, and the way the boat must be set up, and all boats typically would be set up this way coming from the manufacturer, so that the line feeds ever so slightly up toward the, the, the winch. If it comes the other way with it coming slightly downward, this can turn into a mess. We can see already that as this tightens, this line is going to eventually tighten down over that line and it's a royal mess so that's for us sailors I, i'll be startled if that shows up in your test here in an hour either that are really big power boats that have those for the dock dock lines have winches for the dock lines yeah do they some of the power boats have winches for the dock lines oh interesting you should flemish them on the dock Big, big. On the dock, yeah. Like, have like, like 80 feet and oh, up. Right. Okay. Well, when you get one of those, <laughs> call me and I'll remind you about that. <laughs> I'll make sure that the line is coming in yeah. with, with a slight upward angle. Okay. You talked about whipping things, coiling, flemishing, chafing gear. <sighs> Cover this is just all review. Don't think that there's anything after this. This is just review questions which we've just gone over. Still got a copy of this PowerPoint. Great, thank you. Okay, yeah, we, we, we accomplished it. Okay. Okay. So in rather than going through questions, I think we probably should just go move right to the test because you guys right. would like to get home before breakfast. Right. So I'll gather up all my little goodies. 
These plates would break. Yeah. Can we keep, we keep this open? You can keep the, the thin line. Yeah, take it with you. If for no other reason than you've got knots described on your student file. see if I have glasses in the car. I am doing the same I, thing. I forgot my reading glasses. I'm doing the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that I need them. I'm just not accustomed Thank God I don't need them. As a good auto, I always have my number two.